here's the first image, and this is going to be oligodendrocytes on H and E stain. Um, this is a really common picture, and people describe the appearance of oligodendrocytes as a fried egg kind of appearance. Um, I've never really seen that, but that's what it's commonly described as. This next image is going to be Achilles tendon xanthomas. So these are commonly seen in familial hypercholesterolemia, and you can kind of see this yellow tinge to the xanthomas here that represents the buildup of cholesterol. Uh, so this is a pretty common image, and if you ever uh, have a scenario with a patient described with, uh, uh, you know, a bump on the um, Achilles tendon area back there, you want to be thinking about familial hypercholesterolemia. This next one is a cherry hemangioma, and this is something I always had a hard time with for some reason. So cherry hemangiomas are seen in adults, usually in about uh, mid-middle-aged adults. Uh, they're benign, um, and adults usually have them throughout the rest of their life thereafter. This next one is a cherry red spot on the macula. You can see it right here. And this is common in three conditions, which are definitely high yield, uh, and they are Tay-Sachs disease, Neiman-Pick disease, and central retinal artery occlusion. Um, so be aware of both the appearance of this image and the diseases that it is seen in. This next one is also pretty common. This is erythema infectiosum, uh, also caused, also called um, slapped cheek disease, also caused fifth, called fifth disease. Remember, this one is caused by parvovirus B19, uh, which is the only single-stranded double A, double or excuse me, single-stranded DNA virus um, that's relevant for boards. Uh, so you get this slapped cheek appearance. Uh, this is seen in kids. Uh, another point is that parvovirus B19, when seen in adults, can cause acute arthropathy. So be aware of that as well. This is Kaposi's sarcoma. Uh, this is caused by human herpes virus 8, and it's commonly seen in AIDS patients. So this is a pretty high yield image as well. So if you ever have a patient scenario um, with someone who's HIV positive, with someone who uh, sounds like they're extremely immunocompromised, you would definitely want to be thinking about Kaposi's sarcoma, and this can happen pretty much anywhere on the body. This next one is Burton's lines, uh, and these are seen right here, and these are a sign of lead poisoning. Remember, another sign of lead poisoning that you would see on a blood smear uh, would be basophilic stipling, which we'll see uh, probably in a later video. This is an extremely high yield image. This is going to be a sign of henoch schonlein purpura. So um, both the image and the description are high yield. Uh, as you can see here, there's palpable purpura, both on the buttocks and uh, down the leg, mainly on the extensor surfaces. That's how it's usually described. Uh, and this is going to be seen in children. So palpable purpura, you want to be thinking mainly about henoch schonlein purpura. Um, this image is, itself isn't very high yield, um, but the description is. So this is current jelly sputum. Um, I just wanted to put a picture of it because a lot of people just know the term, but they don't know exactly what it looks like. Um, so current jelly sputum is going to be seen in alcoholics and diabetic patients who have uh, pneumonia caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae. So this is basically what it looks like. Um, they might not even say current jelly sputum, but it's just something along those lines. You want to be thinking about pneumonia caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae. This next one is extremely high yield. This is Cryptococcus neoformans uh, seen on India ink stain. So pretty much everything about this is high yield. Uh, this image you won't really see any other microorganisms that look like this. Cryptococcus is heavily encapsulated, so all this thickening that you see out here uh, is the capsule. Uh, and also, Cryptococcus neoformans is really the only thing for the purposes of boards uh, that is stained with an India ink stain. So if you see this image or if you see anywhere India ink stain, you want to be thinking about Cryptococcus neoformans. Another thing that is associated with Cryptococcus neoformans is pigeon droppings. Uh, that's really uh, another big buzzword for, for this bug. 
Um, this next one is uh, Guma, and this is a chronic granuloma that can appear anywhere on the body. Uh, it's a sign of tertiary syphilis. Uh, it takes a lot of different appearances depending on where it's located, but this is really one that, uh, that kind of just stuck with me. Um, so that's why I used it. So again, this is a guma, and it's a sign of tertiary syphilis. This next one is a port wine stain, also called nevus flamius. So this is a vascular birthmark, mainly on the face. Um, this is fairly common. People have this. Um, but one thing that it's associated with is Sturge Weber syndrome. So you want to know that association of port wine stain may also be called Nevis Flamius uh, and Sturge Weber syndrome. This next one um, is pretty common and pretty well known to medical student students. This is erythema chronica migrans. Um, most people know it as the bullseye rash, but it is also important to know it by this name, erythema chronica migrans. Uh, and this is the rash that is seen in Lyme disease caused by the Ixodes tick. That is also high yield. The Ixodes tick is what causes Lyme disease and is going to give you this bullseye rash, this erythema chronica migrans. This next image is a CT scan of the brain. And what we're looking at here is a subdural hematoma. You can see it right up here. Uh, so a subdural hematoma is crescent-shaped. The way that I always remember that is that crescent has an S in it, subdural hematoma has an S in it. Just a silly thing, but that always helped me. So remember that subdural hematomas are mainly seen in the elderly. They're caused by a rupture of the cortical bridging veins, uh, and they can cause midline shift, which you're seeing a shift of the ventricles right here. Uh, another point, just to add, the reason that they're seen in the elderly is because um, over time there's atrophy of the brain, uh, which causes these cortical veins on the periphery of the brain to, to stretch, uh, and they can be really easily uh, ruptured at that point. Uh, so this is going to be an image of Bouchard's nodes. These are commonly seen in osteoarthritis. Here they are right here. Um, so these are osteophytes seen in the proximal interphalangeal joint. Remember, these are proximal, not the distal interphalangeal joints. Those will be called Heberden nodes, which we'll also see in a later video. The way that I always remember that is because B comes before H, Bouchard comes before Heberden, and proximal comes before distal. Just another way that I remembered things while I was studying. These are splinter hemorrhages, and they are seen in bacterial endocarditis. Bacterial endocarditis is a condition that has a lot of different high-yield um, buzzwords and images, so we'll see a lot of those throughout the course of these videos as well. Splinter hemorrhages. Uh, this next one is very high-yield. There's a ton of them in this image. These are somoma bodies, so you can see these concentric calcifications. Here's a really good look at one. These concentric calcifications called somoma bodies, <clears throat> and they're seen in four primary conditions. And to remember those conditions, uh, you can just look at the name. I capitalized these letters on purpose. So the four conditions in which you'll see somoma bodies include papillary thyroid carcinoma, uh, serous carcinoma of the endometrium and ovary, meningiomas, and mesotheliomas. So P, S, M, M, those are the four conditions uh, in which you'll see somoma bodies. One other thing that I used to remember is that men love their mamas. So meningiomas are associated with somoma bodies. This next image is a blood smear showing Howell Jolly bodies. Remember, these are basophilic remnants of DNA that are seen in red blood cells in patients with low spleen function or asplenia. Um, and the reason that they're here is because if you have spleen hypofunction or, or no spleen at all, the spleen won't be able to remove the remnants of these DNA from the red blood cells, and you'll see them on a peripheral smear. This next image uh, is ankylosing spondylitis, also called bamboo spine. 
You can see in the X right here, the arrow is pointing to areas where the spine has started to fuse and gives the appearance of bamboo. Um, one other thing that's really associated with this is HLA-B27. Uh, HLA-B27 is associated with all of the seronegative spondyloarthropathies, and ankylosing spondylitis is one of those. Um, but HLA-B27 is most associated with this condition. So if you ever see HLA-B27 on an exam, the first thing you want to be thinking about is ankylosing spondylitis. And this is going to be the last image for this video. These are Kirschman spirals. And Kirschman spirals represent spiral-shaped mucus plugs, as you can see here, um, that are seen from a variety of lung diseases. Um, one common one is going to be asthma. So if you ever see this type of spirally appearance, don't be fooled. It's not a spirochete. Uh, you'll probably be able to figure that out from the question stem. But you want to be thinking Kirschman spirals and some type of lung pathology, primarily asthma.